A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to another episode of Yilungele Lako Eats Your Right, your leading consumer rights show in South Africa. But you can call me speech. And I'm telling you, and that is 011 714 or 6919. We're also welcoming to your emails, so send us those emails to consumer at sabc.co.za. Alternatively, you can tweet me directly by using the Twitter handle, and that is at speech in Zaumbi. And don't forget to hashtag Yilungelo Lako, or rather just go to our Facebook page, and that is Yilungelo Lako on SABC1. Good afternoon, South Africa. <laughs> Now, the South African government has been praised for introducing progressive consumer rights laws and enforcement mechanisms. But consumers continue to suffer injustice at the hands of service providers who fail or refuse to comply with the legislation. So in our episode today, we extend or we examine the extent to which these rights have become a reality in the lives of consumers, including the challenges faced in, enfor in enforcing existing laws in South Africa. Have a look at this insert. Onge malanga, batengi, batangana ne batengi insi. Kwa kiwe bilelwane, alesinye skati, kukachanwe. Uma kachenwege, dine ingdinle la batengi, leba vagalisa ngadongye nilisegi guabo. Jenga guya go Hello Peter, kubega ima billboard, kanyene guya kube dinzaba. Kepagmele ngabe agwende igidogu, ngoba batengi, bane malungelo. No, I don't know them at all. No, I don't. Not, not entirely. I was. No, I was. I was. Tuli zungu. Usebenda la pepanza ba isoweten. Usebenda ngeti kalo te batengi. Misha yonkele. Hello, kunjani. The most uh, sad thing is that a number of consumers, they still do not know their rights and their responsibilities. And some of the consumers, they know that uh, they have rights, but knowing that you have rights and not uh, knowing the rights, it exposes our consumers to uh, to abuse of our um, service providers who who are um, uncaring, who are very tough, who are waiting to pounce on a consumer who is ignorant of their rights. Kepema business la timele aksiwo odwa langendigale. Let me say, since last year, I'm judging by Nyagas Mwagwan. Every month, I would have a consumer, a consumer complaint, a government official, most particularly a government pension fund. The longest complaint I've had is that of a woman who has been waiting for a pension payout. Yeah, yeah, okay, for the past 14 years. She only got paid last week. Uti no maikona imtetfole vigele malungele batengi. Our consumers, they are taken for a ride because they do not understand the language a good contract. Our companies, I don't think they have changed our contract to a isizulu. No ma isizulu. No ma isizonga. No ma isikosa. Kune tinlangano le tesuga shugeni. Tetuele malungele batengi. Kepase ngati at 70 sani. Lokwenda kwe guti batengi. Bangati kwe guti. Mumu pumyango le kumele bangu ngote guo. Kunga konje batengi bati. Use mkulu msebend le kumele wendi. Yes, there is consumer justice, but then gumanyama, like my companies and all those stuff, I don't think they really use those those kind of regulations. We are going to go to the people. We are going to go to the people. We are going to go to the people. As long as we are going to go to the people, we are going to go to the people. 
So I'm going to just this. Mili Fel Yun, Usabendela Lovis le batengi, e khauteng. Ubeye abe lunga le National Consumer Protection Forum. Lenye din sangano, le vigele malunge le batengi. Well, there is justice in that sense that, that there is consumer protection agencies. Provincial consumer offices are supposed to have consumer courts. Now the, that's where the, the no part is unfortunate because not all uh, provinces' courts are fully functional. And, and that is, you know, really cause delayed in consumer justice. <laughs> The smaller businesses, uh, non-compliance on their side is big. Mostly uh, businesses will, will indicate that it's too costly for them to comply. There is certainly a need for us, uh, you know, to do more consumer education campaigns, run more awareness programs to ensure that consumers are empowered to be able to enforce their rights. The Consumer Commission it has been quiet for Iskat SE, the consumer tribunal, and Kumbuli Uguti, Ikegwabakona, any hearing with tribunal. Jongabas Bunga Dai Consumer Rights Month, Lenyangaya March, Yepanskwes Tubulule City, Consumer Rights are Human Rights. Batengi, Bakutsato Guti, Bafage Sandla, Egwenden Guti, Lamalungelo Abo, Anga Greninja Ali Pupo, Zinja Jamini, Ilungelo Lako. Now to take our discussion further on consumer rights and the role dedicated bodies uh, let uh, me welcome our studio guests today who are joining us right in studio. I'll start with our regular on the show and that is uh, Tami Bolani. He is from the National Consumer Forum Academy. And we'll also have Ibrahim Mohammed, who is the commissioner at the National Consumer Commission. And just next to him is Jacqueline Boucher uh, from the National Credit Regulator. And telephonically we'll be joined by Peggy Drotsky, who is the acting CEO of the South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Lady and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And welcome. Welcome. Thank you for Thank you. Us. All right. I think we just need to uh, start uh, from the beginning. Uh, what is the general, just in general, what is the landscape of consumerism in South Africa? Let me start with you, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for that question. Consumerism in South Africa, the level of consumerism in South Africa is not at the desired level, mm -hmm. but it is certainly much higher than what it was um, a few years ago especially since the promulgation of the uh, Consumer Protection Act. There are thousands and thousands more consumers in this country who are aware of their rights and their responsibilities, as well as um, businesses who have been educated and informed about uh, the Consumer Protection mm -hmm. Act. All right. Uh, but I mean, t consumers seem to be taken for a ride because they don't know uh, their rights. Who is responsible for making sure that uh, I'm a consumer, they know I'm a lungelo abo as a batting? Yes. You as a consumer have a responsibility to know your rights and your, your responsibilities and to exercise them when you go to the, to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And other organizations like the Consumer Commission, like the NCR, play a supporting, a supporting role. But I think the first responsibility is with the consumer. That's why I would say consumers have rights and responsibility. The first responsibility that the consumer has is to know his rights and responsibilities mm -hmm. and then be able to exercise them. Because if you don't exercise them, then one, you'll be a victim of an unfair business practice. Two, you won't be able to get a um, redress. So mm -hmm. I would say very strongly that we as consumers need to make sure that we know what our rights are. Uh, uh, talking exactly about that, Gutabandu, they need to know their rights, what their rights are. I'm still going to come to the question of sure, sure. uh, the issue of e-language being the major issue. Right. Most consumers say that these contracts and these documents that have got uh, these rights and, and legislation, they're in English. And, and most consumers suffer as a result of that. But let me come to you, Jackie. Uh, being from the NCR and, of course, uh, regulation of loans, uh, lending of money, retention of money, and all those things, uh, you have been known, uh, basically, as much as you have visited but the banking sector has been blamed of lending money to consumers that consumers cannot entirely afford. And that on its own is seen as non-compliance. What do you have to say about that? I think that um, I can agree to a certain extent that uh, there have been a lot of issues raised around lending. I wouldn't spe specifically say a specific sector, mm -hmm. but I would say that um, it is something general consumer over-indebtedness and, and monies lent to them um, are actually in the spotlight. But when one digs into it, 
um, you know, just as uh, Tumi has said, that consumers have rights and duties. And so generally we want to rely on our rights to say that, um, you know, I've been extended monies um, irregularly, I mm -hmm. cannot afford them. But when we look at the duties, our duties of disclosing, to be honest and truthful, we sometimes will under-disclose just to get a loan. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky um, playing field to be within, and as the regulator, we take it very seriously. But, I mean, as consumers, we need to, I fully agree, rights and duties are there on our part. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, let's come to you again. Uh, the yeah. issue of language is being used in this documentation. Uh, it, it's seen as, as who cannot understand Uluimi Luasimzi, and that is English. Uh, what are you doing, especially being somebody who also has an academy of your own that looks at, I mean, it's part of the big organization, I know, mm -hmm. but what are you doing to make sure that you look at that issue and you meet consumers who are, who, who are suffering as a result? Well, the issue of making a language simpler yeah, well. for consumers to understand has been ongoing for, for, for many years. And it's a campaign, really, that the Consumer Commission should be should be Looking. driving because mm -hmm. they've got the resources, they've got the capacity for it. Mm -hmm. But it's something that started more than, 10, more than 10 years ago. But it's not just about the language. We also have a disadvantage in this country that a lot of our people are not really literate. Mm. Uh, education plays a very important role here. So we need to understand that. Mm. Number three is that uh, many times when people sign contracts, mm. information is not fully disclosed mm. to them. And that's where the problem really comes. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of issues, as she said, it's a bit tricky. It is tricky because you've got education, you've got the language, which is not that simple. You mm -hmm. also have the issue of education. Education. And so we, education we is the big issue it. and, you know, literacy, uh, literacy Correct. rather, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to these languages and whatnot. Uh, Ibrahim, after the break, I want to, uh, you know, there's been issues around, especially when it comes to your organization. A lot of these organizations or these consumer protection bodies have been labeled as invisible. People don't know where they are. They don't know what they stand for. Uh, they don't know whether they are for them. Well, we, well, definitely, according to documents, or according to policy, they are for them, but they don't know where to access them. So I think after the break, we just need to touch on that issue. I'll come back well, welcome back. Uh, well, if you just joined us, our question today is Have consumer rights uh, become a reality to you as a consumer? Do you even know what consumer laws and uh, you know the consumer protection bodies and uh, of course just to approach uh, the recourse? Well, uh, just to share your views and comments, please make sure that uh, you send me your tweets right there. The Twitter handle is at speech in Zaun, but of course you can call me right in studio. The number is 011-714-6918-06919. And of course also taking your emails. So please make sure that you send me your emails. It's consumer at sabc.co.za. Um, Ibrahim, before the break, I was just raising, I spoke to Tammy and Tammy was raising the issue of illiteracy being the biggest issue in our country. We do know that there are areas uh, that illiteracy is most dominant in. And, and the issue of languages, you know, to have these laws compressed or rather put together in a way that will uh, be appealing and make sense to the illiterate somebody. Uh, what are you doing in your organization to make sure that you come and, and you meet uh, those needy consumers in that issue? Um, firstly, speech, the, there's a requirement in terms of the act mm -hmm. that um, uh, information to consumers must be in plain and understandable language. Yes. So there's a requirement in terms of the act. What the uh, Commission has done and continues to do is um, in order to reach people, mm. and we found that one of the best ways to do that is by making use of the community radio stations. Yes. We go onto these community radio stations regularly. Um, and they are in all the different languages, mm. whether it be English, Afrikaans, Sotho, Venda, whatever language mm -hmm. might be. That is one of the most effective means that we have at our disposal, given limited resources and so on, mm -hmm. to, to, to speak to consumers in the language that they understand yes. so that consumers can understand their rights mm -hmm. and so on. We are also in the process of developing guidelines um, uh, when it comes to what plain and understandable language means. Mm -hmm. That has proved to be a more arduous task than we initially thought, but it is something that we still have to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and also we, we, we go on TV, we make use of the media, we make use of um, uh, many other platforms at business level, 
at consumer level, at community level, mm -hmm. and so on, to inform consumers. Have you done some rights. sort of a review to check if uh, the information that you're trying to put across to the consumer, if it's being received or rather being practiced, especially, you know, by service providers who are also, because illiteracy is not just from the consumer side, right. you know, there are service providers who don't understand the issue of compliance. Have you done a bit of a review to go and check if uh, consumers and service providers are really receiving this information and practicing it? The Commission hasn't done a review as such, but we do get feedback um, uh, from the different organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, when we do have seminars, when we do have conferences, when we do speak on the radio, we, we, we try to establish the listenership, mm -hmm. how many people have we reached and so on. Um, also, we get uh, reviews and comments by participants at these events um, on, on, on how we've performed and what the value add has been to the people. Mm -hmm. Just looking generally at the landscape, would you say that there's been developments and people are being progressive when it comes to those issues to taking regard of the law and practicing it? I think there's from been... From the feedback you've received. There's been improvement. Mm -hmm. There is continuous improvement is at the levels of, of, of um, understanding and, mm -hmm. and and compliance. All right. Well, right now we're going to cross over to Peggy Drotsky. Uh, Peggy is the acting CEO of the South African Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Peggy, thank you so much for joining us on the program and welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Well, let's start with, uh, you know, just talking about the consumer journalism in South Africa. A lot of consumers, uh, you know, have been complaining, saying that the Consumer Protection Act is toothless. Uh, you know, the rights of consumers are being ignored and there's no action that's taken uh, to protect the consumer. Would you agree? What are your sentiments on the statement? You know, there are patches where you've got good compliance and patches where the compliance is not as good. And I think basically um, part of the problem is that the... the um, consumers themselves mm -hmm. need to be educated as to where they should actually be um, lodging their complaints because there are different structures within the provisions where the complaints need to be lodged. And if a consumer lodges a complaint at an incorrect um, place, then obviously it's going to take a long time and the impression is given that the act is toothless and action is not taken. Mm -hmm. In this instance, we've got the ombuds which act as protectors of the consumer. Um, we've got the, um, if I could use um, both in government as well as um, in the private sector, there's a, um, ICASA, for instance. Mm -hmm. There's a council for medical schemes. Mm -hmm. There's um, the credit regulator. There's the FSB. There's the SARS um, on that. Mm -hmm. And if people put, give their um, complaints in at the wrong place, I mean, obviously, it takes a longer time for them to get. So what really needs to be done is quite a strong educational campaign needs to be undertaken so that the consumer knows where they can get the best results if they are unhappy with what treatment they've been receiving. Mm. Peggy, a lot of businesses have been known uh, to be favoring non-compliance. Uh, just for businesses who are into non-compliance, what are the penalties? The penalties can be very, very strong. In fact, if they contravene Section 1071, which relates to a breach of confidence, then the penalties can be up to imprisonment, um, up to 10 years, and a very significant fine. But if there is another breach, then it is also a fine or a period of imprisonment not exceeding 12 months, or both a fine and the imprisonment. But it is reasonably flexible, and it depends on... Um, how serious the contravention is. Okay. Uh, small businesses and unregistered businesses uh, have been known uh, to also non-comply. You, know, you, you know, they don't comply with the uh, regulations and, uh, that you put. Uh, what, what, what are you doing to make sure that they do, uh, you know, come in terms with their legislation, they understand the ramifications as well, and, you know, moving forward, uh, that they do better? Mm -hmm. The um, basic problem is that um, the small and medium-sized enterprises and the um, informal businesses, informal businesses particularly, are known not to comply with any laws. And it is really um, one of those issues where we need to do quite a lot of work, but we haven't actually tapped that particular area yet. On the small business side, we have got 55 chambers that are located in the towns and cities across the country, mm -hmm. and they hold regular seminars 
on issues relating to operating a business, Mm -hmm. and that includes the requirement of the Consumer Protection Act. But it forms part of a package of um, uh, legislation that individuals need to be um, working with. We've actually got a program at the moment where we are empowering our chambers to give the appropriate information to their members. Mm. Because even um, our chambers in many instances can be regarded as small enterprises Mm -hmm. and they themselves don't have the resources to get all the information that is required. So we are in the process of empowering Empowering them and then they can then pass on the information to the enterprises that are in their areas where they operate. All right. Peggy, thank you so much uh, for giving your insight uh, on the show. We'll perhaps be crossing to you a bit uh, later, but right now we'll take our discussion right in the studio. And that, of course, was Peggy Drotsky, who was the CEO of uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The issue of compliance. What makes compliance so difficult, Putami uh, Gumashishini? The registered, both the registered and unregistered, there seems to be a really an, a big issue. <coughs> we've outlined, we've given people where we're coming from and what we've done, but what, why, why is there an issue around compliance? Well, in my experience, mm-hmm. there are two issues. One, businesses are not interested in complying. They don't care because there are no sanctions. Mm-hmm. That's a feedback I get every day. Mm. There is a gentleman I'm representing right now from Tembisa. Okay. He's on the verge of losing his property. And when I spoke to the lawyers and I told them about uh, consumer protection agencies in the country, the legislation that are going to be taking action, the response was good well. Right. Okay. And you get that every day. Of course, the second thing is that we as consumers, uh, we don't understand uh, our, own, our own rights. So we really need uh, all of us, mm-hmm. governmental institutions and non-governmental bodies, to work together to ensure that we empower consumers to make the right decisions. Because the problem actually starts when you sign on the dotted line when mm. you make that purchase. If you make the wrong decisions, you can end up losing a lot of money. So it's very important that consumers are empowered to take that right decision right at the beginning. Right decision right at the beginning. And also, I think, you, you know, like what we said, what alluded earlier on, that, you know, illiteracy is, is still a big issue. It plays on and of course, and, uh, you know, just to uh, have this information and, and, and to give people the information in a way that is receptive to them and that is understood in their own language. Well, uh, don't forget to send us your tweets right there at Speech in Zaumbi. And of course, on Facebook, you can go and check our page, Yilunga Dolako. And of course, you can call us right in studio on 0117146918 and 6919. And I think after this ad break, we'll be taking your calls. So you better make sure that you call is also amongst those we'll be taking right here in the studio. Let's quickly go for this quick commercial break. We'll be back shortly. That's our question. And joining me right here in studio is Jackie, uh, Mr. Mohammed, and of course, Budi Tami Bolani, who is a regular on our show. And I think we've got a caller. We've got Jackson who's calling us from the Eastern Cape. Hello, Jackson. Hello, uh, what that? Yeah, yeah, it's all a different company is in Well, that's a little imani, so probably seven to the best. The family, uh, is a Okay, the Patalet, that trained about two times. Ne? Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, is going to answer you right now, but no, in the final line, we must get to look at the equality because um, to to we must get to look at the line. Go find a logo to a a pool with credit bureau. If you have a pool, we have a change in our office, a national credit regulator, or a good credit ombud. But if there is information and the information about the seven zero we take a bank keep. But on condition, we must get to look at the line. Data, data, no. Yes. Eh, what data? Hotel, we look at the school. It is a good one. But to say, I want to go to the seven. I'm 
kutoa kupelen donda. Kwa 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 kutu utani la kwa kwa kanis. Ah. Yeah. Inda kwa 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 so when us to make low information, I'm sure he contact details there too. Was also told like we screen in our program. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other one and the two car and then down there is a pencil and a favorite. Hey, what's up? 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 Utatele nombo luza mkakamisha la ngeno putami Baza kwa zibaona baba ngeti ane nawe Batate zongeza ato kumetas provide Nito bana sopa tele Baza ngeti bupume kukredi piyoto Well that was um, Our caller was calling us from the Eastern Cape Remember that you can also uh, call us right in studio The number is 0117146918 and 6919 Let me just quickly take some of the emails that people have sent me Remember that you can also send us emails To consumer at sabc.co.za um, I've got uh, Siasanga Sifaki who says here, I bought a cell phone for my 12-year-old son last year, December on the 24th. It's a Samsung Galaxy Pocket Neo 5 for 500 trends, um, 599 rather. That phone was on display and it was the last one. So I took it. February this year, my son was dropped. So I went to open the case because the person who took it was known. I went to Photoshop to blacklist the phone so that I can get the ITC number. Unfortunately, the consultant told me that the cell phone number is not corresponding with the papers and the box. I don't know what to do. I am at the dead, uh, dead end. I brought the phone uh, from one of the retail stores. What can this uh, consumer do? Jackie, do you have any assistance? I think uh, my advice would be to go and approach um, ICASA so that they could assist um, with um, just looking at the um, serial number. They do regulate the service providers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if it is uh, an issue, then they would be able to just give her the correct assistance. Is it? All right, let's take another one. Uh, we've got Tabo Twala. Uh, Tabo says, Mina ngilenginga and nklezi ngitola i call. Bati yinkamba ni ezmele. Bati bafuna umkulu wami. Uh, we are kwele da kwa eskom imali engango 126 rands. Umkulu sewa shona. Giaba jela ukut kota abayi kukfona from Mr. Twala. What can this, uh, uh, this consumer do? No, gulula nje. Angaba penduli. Angaba penduli. Mabe fonela atrope ifon. Mabe loke be mharasa. I report to the National Consumer Commission. Is it? Is it? And, uh, you know, I, I hear all of you. You're saying that these people, we had uh, 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 Mr. Nong uh, was calling us from the Eastern Cape early on, yeah. but he, he said, you know, it's a devastating story to him because mm. he's a pensioner. And he still, when, wherever he goes, he's being told that, you know, he, he was garnished. Uh, there's this uh, information that reflects against his name. And you tell us about these beautiful organizations, the ICASAs, and all that, but they're not visible to the general public. And I, I felt the pain of that caller was calling. What are you really doing? You know, I, I do understand that, Mr. Mohammed, you gave us uh, that you've got steps that you're taking. But in those cases, in a person who is urgently needing your assistance or one of the consumer protection bodies, what can they do? Besides calling for people who cannot go to the bigger cities to access the offices. There is one thing that the National Consumer Commission has realized. And that is that consumers want, if not immediate redress, they want very quick redress. Mm -hmm. They want to be assisted. They are not really interested in what the supplier has done right or wrong and what the commission would want to do with the supplier. They are interested, for instance, if uh, an appliance breaks down, the housewife or the, 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 the whoever is, um, uh, owns the, 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 the uh, appliance, like a refrigerator, for instance, they want that refrigerator repaired immediately. Mm. They are not interested in waiting weeks for, for a months. complaint to be lodged and, and, and so on. So what we advise consumers, and, and that is that consumers should immediately contact the point of sale. Mm -hmm. Can't go to the supplier. Go to the supplier and present the case to the supplier. Let the supplier sort out the problem. Okay. Only if the supplier is unable to sort out the problem. That they can come to you. Go elsewhere. All right, let's quickly take another call. I've got Matlangu who's calling us from Binoni. Hello, Matlangu. Yeah, well, uh, yes. 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 Yes.
I, I, I cast them a good setting shop where I am um, to my contact on my phone. So, what you want more young or effect here with a 30 fold? What rope I want to 8,000 in the phone? What we are in a shop in a one month on my phone? And then I'm telling you what you to your reporter, but I'm telling you, you point you bring an insurance. Some man, I love to get an over one killer my phone is watching a better in insurance. Okay, um, you know, my furious one quite I want. Why I don't want a sapata, Luna Patel Bez and Sibin Zibazum Canish. Okay, why I don't Patel five hundred, four hundred and ninety nine every month for four years. After four years, Babu Yile food, but I got paid to contact Fanana Kubeka Pata, and I'm seven in the city bazo with Upetu Pata. So he still managed to be a food to go for ninety nine Usapata food. So we don't know that we find us back for eight years for ten years as I understand the lab. Uh, yes, ma. Okay, U U Putami is, is, is going to answer you. Putami, she's still on the line, so we can yeah. talk to her. Yes, yes. In King Amakanishi orders, in Kuluga Kuru Lining is in Africa. In Tokfanaluense, Uguti Umunama records would be in Kokaranja and Lenti Kalanini. Yeah. In Kaluguti Um Tinte Um to Melama documents from some look. Then she's a good to see Kazulu and King Water. In the Balegi, Lut of Fatman Tatama phone, Launi Peguti. We contract in the insurance corner and go if none goes in the local. But it's not a thing. I call it. The good time is logging. Okay, uh, it seems like we've lost our callers calling us from Binoni. Uh, but uh, for further uh, information, we're going to put those contact details on our screen and, of course, uh, on our Facebook page. But let, let's come to back to our issue, which is, of course, the issue of justice for the consumer. Would you say that there's justice for consumers in South Africa? Jackie? Yes, I definitely believe so. I believe that. Um, all the bodies that have been established are um, really putting in a strong effort to make sure that the consumer rights are protected. Understanding that in the industries that we find ourselves in, y you can have legislation that is um, way high or way high. Um, someone is always going to try and um, bend those rules or interpret those rules to suit mm. themselves and um, obviously where we have consumers that are not fully educated they're not going to be able to stand on their rights but as organizations we need to push and ensure and i think we are doing that to ensure that those rights are protected and um, that consumers do become educated but you see the problem is that there are various bodies that deal with consumer uh, complaints or consumer rights there's the ombudsman there's the national consumer commission there's the national consumer tribunal uh, you know why are there so many separate bodies that cannot uh, work together combined? We do work together combined. So very often what happens is, is that meetings are established, that MOUs are established, that we touch base with each other, do training for um, each other's call centers and say, you know, let's see how we can work together because it becomes a little bit difficult for consumers to understand. And although we can go out there and we can communicate which body does what, mm -hmm. for a consumer, we come across a number and we're going to lodge that complaint. So we have referral protocols amongst ourselves mm -hmm. to say, if someone approached me and it is the incorrect organization, I am going to refer it to the correct body. And that we are doing. So it's, it's a, a small step, but I think it goes a far way. It's, it's going forward. Okay, well, let's quickly go for another air break. 011 and 6919 is the number to dial in order to be a part of our discussion right here in studio. I'm also looking at your messages on Facebook and, of course, some of your emails. So uh, do not dismay. Send them through. And eventually, I think after the break, we'll just have to check some of your messages. We'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Hukubula Gekba Bendi Tensa. Utabata Benga Imiyala Zoyako Sende Leona. Apago Facebook via our Facebook page. So let me take some of those messages. We've got Malwongo Belemanyo Nyao says, Eona Nga Agis Chungade Na Yogulize Gulizwe Yoguba. Yonke Lemi Teto Yo Kusela Abantu Ikona. Kodwa Abantu Kufana Lukba Iba Kusele Abayazi. Ayi Yikubo. Kunendo Elibale Gayo Ape South Africa Yoguba. Not Wonke Umdu Uide Skolweni. Ngoako Ke Una Gok Funda Izindo Ezipalunge Singesi. I think Ubeza Ubeza Maguti Agana Aga Una Gok Funda Wonke Umdu and then we've got George Vongani Wagamatonzi who says our government must act harsh on the service providers who abuse consumers and act as they are, as they are above the law. Consumers must stop their bad attitude towards their service providers and stop hiding behind the word consumer. The customer is always right. Jackie, it's so surprising because uh, during the outbreak, this is exactly what we were talking mm. about. You know, if the customer is always right, is that the, you know, how it's supposed to be? Am I always right as the customer? Definitely not. Mm -hmm. So 
I think it was very well put in a recent constitutional court decision, which actually said that these, specifically the National Credit Act, but I would think that all of them, is not only one-sided consumer focused. And as consumers, you know, we have been given rights and so we've taken it sometimes a little bit too far to believe that, you know, I have the right to demand whatever I want from agencies protecting me and also the credit providers. Mm -hmm. And um, there are laws in place and so objectivity needs to be put in place to say, you know, are you correct consumer? Are you not? And where it is in the consumer's favour, that's where it will be found. Mm. But if not, um, that agencies will clearly tell those consumers that, um, you know, you have towed the line. Mm. Let's come to you, uh, Ibrahim, about the National Consumer Commission. What are you doing to improve uh, your visibility to make sure that your services are accessible countrywide? We have, um, uh, for instance, for this month, um, for March, we have an imbizo uh, planned for the 15th of March uh, in Springs in the East Rand somewhere. We will be inviting several guests, including the Deputy Minister of uh, Trade and Industry, Mr. Messina. Mm -hmm. We'll be inviting several MECs from different provinces, and there'll be an imbizo to celebrate World Consumer Rights Day, mm -hmm. which takes place on the 15th of so March. So is this going to be countrywide in different provinces? It's going to be focused on one imbizo okay. um, in, in, in the East Rand, uh, near Spring somewhere. Okay. It takes place on a Sunday, where hopefully people will be free to be able to attend the Inviso. Okay. Um, but to answer your question, we also have seminars, we attend conferences, we have an advocacy, education and um, awareness unit within, division within the National Consumer Commission, whereby um, uh, we aim to educate not only consumers but mm -hmm. also businesses. We do this by various means, um, as I said, by holding workshops and seminars for businesses and consumers, but also going on mall activations. They, they are when we uh, send out mm -hmm. a team to a specific shopping mall mm -hmm. where they hand out information and brochures and leaflets and have complaints forms and a table mm -hmm. where consumers can come and talk to them, uh, big banners advertising the National Consumer Commission. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that consumers can become When it comes to the responsibility of the consumer, yeah. do you also perhaps have initiatives in place that will uh, school the consumer? Uh, like Jackie said, that the consumer is not always right. Sometimes uh, the service providers are the viol violation of the consumer. Do you have perhaps uh, initiatives that are looking at co schooling the consumer in that regard? Well, we do both. We do both. Okay. Uh, we, we always, consumers are always informed that they have rights, yes, but they also have responsibilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that they cannot be unreasonable in their demands and that their demands have got to be um, uh, compliant with the act. It, it's got okay. to be in accordance with it. But tell me, what can, in your view, what can these consumer rights bodies do better? Like I said earlier on that you are an all-rounder, so you basically know uh, the general landscape of consumers, especially in their relationship uh, with service providers. What can they do differently? Hey, yeah, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, they are here, so I, I take want to be talking to them after this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let me say, uh, you talked about cooperation before between mm -hmm. the various uh, bodies that protect consumers. Uh, we who come from the non-governmental sector mm -hmm. were excluded. Uh, they work as government, and we don't get involved. And yet, a lot of consumers, when they have problems, mm -hmm. come to us. If they experience problems with them, they come to us. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing we need to resolve to say, even though we're non-state actor, but we're doing the it same needs to work. Be a relationship. We need to work together. Mm -hmm. We're an NGO, we need some form of support to be able to provide mm -hmm. service to our to our consumers. All right. Let me tell you one experience that we have. <clears throat> doing consumer education on its own is not effective. And I've been doing this for about 20 years now, and mm -hmm. I know I'm talking from experience. So what we do uh, is that when we organize a meeting, a seminar, a town meeting, as we call them, you bring in different elements. You say for the first time, we're going to be dealing with issues of consumer rights. Two, we're going to be dealing with issues of empowerment, small business development. Because mm -hmm. people say, look, we are starving. Mm -hmm. We need to talk jobs. We need to talk about all yeah, these things. So yeah. if we, put all those things together in one basket and mm -hmm. then you go to people, 
you'll get a much better response. A much better response. Well, yeah. uh, that's Butami Bolani, of course, who's giving us uh, his experience with consumers uh, throughout the years. Are you learning something in our program today? I'd really love to know that. So please send me those messages. And of course, on Twitter, I'll be reading your Twitter messages. I'm just going to check them right now. But for now, let's quickly go for our final ad break. We'll be back shortly. Facebook rather. We've got Nomwisa Lozulu says we need protection as consumers because we we'll always suffer verbal verbal abuse when we return to our uh, to our service providers that we purchased. If you find uh, that it is not in good condition, sometimes they send us back uh, saying no return, no refund uh, from Ulundi. And of course, we've got Nkhetelo Makumbila who says service providers must give best services to us consumers in order to avoid more customer complaints. The results will be uh, attracting more customers than losing them. And then Senelu Zusine says, Abanye bayase ropa ndi kumbla omnye usisi tenge ukutya kwa kuse special ni klase yo patela wafika ibiza eye price. And then you've got Doriel Siwela who says, Kwenze, Kwenza kala ninga ma shop all right, you know, um, I think that's some of the issues. But let, let me also uh, read your Twitter messages so that you don't say I don't read your tweets. You see, I'm reading your tweets right now. Uh, so we've got Asimiso, uh, it's at Angubane Asimiso, who says, um, give the open the email address. Okay, we're going to give you the email address. Asimiso is consumer at sabc.co.za. Um, and then you've got at Slindom Tlongo, who says, in Genzinjan, if I'm blacklisted, I had an account while I was a student and now I'm blacklisted. Uh, if you're blacklisted, uh, uh, Putami actually said that you need to go and pay the account. And as soon as you have paid the account, uh, you will be removed. The adverse information against your name will be removed. And if that has not happened, you can go to them with the documentation that proves that you have paid. Um, I've got another one down here. Let me go check. Uh, we've got um, at Sivuile Sifugo says, Budi ito wani ndiyokba umtengisi aga nyedisegi because mna divuloye account kwa hardware in Cape Town, kani uh, cancela within two days abavumi. Butami, what can be done in that case? You open an account in two days, you want to go and cancel it, and they, they say, no, you can't. You're trapped with us forever. <laughs> no, we should get, I'm going to go back on the cooling off period, mm -hmm. five days. Before I change, I finally lens a show go to local cooling off period, you call by a sebenzis. So that you may cancel it, you have a mistake or a problem in the product, you mm have -hmm. a problem in the product. If you have a problem, then it becomes a, a problem. Mm, but if you look at our report, uh, my agencies are protecting my consumers. There's a provincial consumer affairs office in Cape Town okay. where you can report the matter. Yeah. So can they come to you first or should they go to the consumer? Well, if the person is in Cape Town, there's a provincial consumer affairs office in okay. Cape Town. So I, I think they should go there first. Yeah, by the way, just so you know, we'll have all the details, especially of all the organizations we've spoken about in the show, we'll have them displayed right here on, on the screen. So please make sure that you diarize and um, you know you check those uh, contact details. You don't call us directly right here on the studio because after this uh, transmission, we will not be able to take a call. Uh, let me go read uh, one message you've got there. It's Maroniza Rory Ino. Wow, what a name. Uh, it says, in South Africa, the citizens are not well educated. Most of our citizens don't know about this act. And even at home, they don't. Under the enterprises that do not comply with the legislation, the government should put penalties, like paying an amount of about um, one. Uh, th wow, how mm. much is that? It's one million, right? One million. Yeah. For not complying with the act. Okay, wow. I think that should be done. Well, that's what the consumer thinks. What do you have to say about that when it comes to the penalties? That's what I spoke about earlier, that there should yeah. be penalties for businesses uh, that choose to go on their non-compliance route. Well, the, there is a national consumer tribunal who is the adjudicative body um, for consumer matters mm -hmm. um, that covers both consumer and credit matters. Um, and the penalties that may be imposed by the tribunal is a fine of one million rand or 10% of the previous year's annual turnover, okay. whichever is the greater, or both. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so there is certainly a penalty that um, uh, can be imposed on right. errant businesses. And, and just yes, to Jackie. add on to that, I mean, it's not only a penalty or a fine. A, a company will be deregistered if the non-compliance is that 
uh, gross, uh, both the Consumer Commission and the NCR would make that referral to the tribunal and ask that that company be deregistered. So, I mean, so it's a fine, there's redress to the consumers, and then there is a cancellation. Those are the remedies that can be imposed. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the initiatives that you have. Uh, I know that uh, Ibrahim gave us some that uh, they will have, be having in Bizo. Uh, let's come to you as NCR. Do you have perhaps a, a separate initiative that you'll be doing aside just to inform, because we know that March is the Consumer Rights uh, Month. We are actually busy with the, 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 the national consumer uh, rights drive. We also have um, people going out as we speak now to different malls. So we, we're also doing that sort of campaign. We're on the radios, um, on television. Okay. Um, and then we, we release media releases on mm -hmm. topical issues. Recently, we did a media release on um, you know, fraudulent uh, money lenders and how they are taking consumers' money. So topically, when we look at, we have specific drives which we focus on, but we also focus on specific issues that we're picking up mm -hmm. in an industry and then do an alert to consumers. Is it? All right, Putami? Well, this month we're launching a consumer fair okay. co cooperative. Mm -hmm. And this cooperative is already signed an agreement with one of the leading financial service providers in the country to launch a insurance product for members of the cooperative. This cooperative will be owned by all mm -hmm. its members. Two, if the profits to be declared, dividends to be shared, all these members of the cooperative will be able to benefit all of them mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that uh, if you look, for instance, at the Euro Co-op, it has members of more than 30 million. Mm -hmm. They employ about 450,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we want to create a similar situation in South Africa okay. where we can also promote employment and not focus only on the issue of consumer rights. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, ladies, uh, lady and gentlemen, rather. <laughs> and of course, we had uh, Peggy Drotsky, uh, who is the CEO of uh, the National, uh, who's the CEO of the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, who was joining us online early on in our discussion. I guess for this person, and let me thank our guests for availing themselves for our discussion today, and thank you to uh, to you right there at home uh, for also, you know, for those calls, those SMSs, those emails and messages on our social platform. If you have any burning topic in your heart that you'd like us to discuss right on the show, please make sure that you send me those via email and also you send me those on Facebook. I would like to know what you're thinking um, and then when we're tackling those issues maybe uh, last week, uh, next week rather, uh, please join us. We'll be tackling uh, the issue of cell phone billing uh, frustrations faced by customers. We also saw some of the messages that we had here. So you can tweet me uh, those suggestions and please make sure that you join us next week. So right now what I'll suggest that you do is that you email us every single detail rather question that you have about that cell phone uh, uh, cell phone billing um, that is an issue that many customers are faced with welcome and the rest of our young local family it's goodbye goodbye <laughs>